What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life. Today, a short free response question from the AP College Board called Linear Collision and Angular Collision. Essentially, what we have is we're going to have three different cases where a ball with some mass is going to come and it's going to strike a rod, which is then going to cause that rod to rotate like this in this fashion. Another thing to tell us is that the frictional effect between the rod, the puck, and the floor, you know, they're small enough to be considered negligible, so we don't have to worry about that, which means that this system is going to be conserved. That means that the momentum, that is, there's no outside torques, so that means because there's no outside torques, I can say that the momentum is going to be conserved in each one of these cases, and that's going to be really important. So for the first part here, they want us to graph the angular momentum of the puck and the angular momentum of the rod, and we have to make sure that we label them, and then they have this point right here in the middle that's considered T contact point. And this was for case one. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to look at what the puck does in case one. So the puck approaches the rod with some speed and it has some momentum and that momentum is going to remain constant until the point of contact. This is puck. Now guys, I completely understand this is so counterintuitive, the fact that this ball is moving linear with some tangential speed, but yet still has some angular momentum. Okay, and the reason for that is that any object in a system that's moving in reference to a pivot point is going to have some angular momentum. And I made a video about that. I'll link it at the end and down in the description. If you're not sure, these ball striking rod problems, they love them. And it's so counterintuitive, you have to understand, even though this puck is not spinning, it still has an angular momentum. So I'm just going to call this some positive angular momentum. And then after contact, it is going to bounce back in the other direction at a smaller angular momentum than it had. So essentially what's going to happen after time contact is the puck is going to have a negative momentum. Now for the rod, the rod starts, it's not rotating and it's not in motion to the pivot point. So it is going to have no momentum. This is going to be the rod. And we know that L is conserved. So where I draw my rod after must depend on how I drew it before. As you can see, right now the L total initial I have is equal to three units. So when I do my rod after the collision, L must still be three units. So if this is minus one unit, then I know that my rod is going to have some angular momentum at four up here. Now I have one unit, two, three, four, minus that one, it is still conserved. So this is the graphs for the puck and the rod up to the collision point and then after time goes on. So in part B, they want to know the angular displacement theta of the rod and how far it's rotated after two seconds after this collision has taken place. So one's going to be the greatest angle, two's going to be. So they want to know what in fact is going to happen here with the rods. Now just to recap the two cases, in case one the ball hits the rod and bounces back with some speed. In case two, the ball hits the rod and stays put, it does not move. And in case three, it hits the rod, stick to the rod, and then continues on. So to answer this question, we are going to have to look at the different momentums before and after for each case. I know that the greatest angular momentum for the rod final will have the greatest theta. So if I can find an expression for L rod final for each case, I will be able to determine which has the greatest theta. And the movement of the puck after is going to be the thing that determines this L rod final. I'm going to set up each case and I'm going to show you how I determine the L rod final for each particular case. So there's going to be some similarities in all three cases. And the similarity is simply that momentum is conserved. So I can say L initial is going to be equal to L final in each case. And because it's the same ball moving at the same speed in each case initially, I know that L naught is going to be the same in every single case. But now after the collision, I'm going to have L final of the rod minus L final of the puck. And the reason I minus this is because it's moving in the opposite direction, right? In this first case, this the rod went this way, the puck went that way. So this has to be minus. So now I can set up an expression and say that L final of the rod is going to be equal to the initial momentum of the system plus the L final of the puck. 
And that's going to be for case number one. I'm going to do the same exact thing and I'm going to say L final of the rod plus L final of the puck. But in the second case, the puck does not move. So it has no angular momentum. So I know that the L final for the rod in the second case is going to be just equal to that initial angular momentum. And in the third case, we're going to have L final of the rod plus the L final of the puck. Because in the third case, the puck and the rod stuck together and moved in the same direction. So it's going to be the sum. So now I can say that the L final of the rod in this case is going to be equal to the initial angular momentum minus the L final of the puck. And this is for case number three. So now I have some initial standard right here where L final is just equal to L naught. This one is L naught plus a little something. So case one has to be greater than case two. And case three is that initial minus some sort of number. So this case three is smaller than this. So we have a situation where one, this is going to have the greatest displacement. Two, this is going to have the second. And three, that's going to have the third. And here's your explanation. Guys, I highly recommend checking out that ball and rod video. I will leave it right here for you to look at. Watch that video if you don't understand why the puck initially has an angular momentum, even though it is not spinning. Any other questions, let me know, guys. Good luck with your studying. I'll catch you on the next one.